Turning back now to the incredible but heartbreaking images that we've been seeing, especially of Sanibel Causeway, ripped apart by Ian, cutting off access to the barrier island. It really is the lifeline there. Our team coverage on the devastating destruction continues live in Lee County with NBC6's Kristen Sanchez. And Kristen, where exactly are you now? So right now, we're in a parking lot in a public parking lot, very close to I-75. We are so out east and not where we were reporting all day, very close to the Sanibel Causeway, and that's because we had no reception out there. So there was no way for us to be live right now on TV without being where we are. But not only did we not have cell phone reception, also all those who rode out the storm and stayed there and survived the conditions, they didn't have cell phone service. No service to call their families to let them know that they're okay. But when we came by, we have this special device for work, and we were able to at least help one family call their mom and tell her that she's all right. Mom? It was happy tears as finally Linda Stout could tell her mom she was okay. You're praying and hoping that you live. Yeah. That's about it. Sorry. <laughs> An emotional day for so many who chose to stay home while the storm passed. Linda and her family live on Connie Mac Island. Take a look. It's a small island just a few miles away from Sanibel, which is essentially ground zero. Connie Mac is surrounded by water, boats, and a restaurant. And before today, this was their paradise. Now, it's just a living nightmare. I did not think it was going to be as big as it was, obviously. If we had known, we would not have stayed. Oh. It's tough. <laughs> Besides the whipping winds Hurricane Ian brought to Southwest Florida, the Stout family's biggest battle was the storm surge. Looking out of our front window, watching water come up and, um, you know, it, so we were totally surrounded by water. And as folks are waking up this morning, they're realizing just how high that water came into their homes, four and a half feet, and you can see by the water line left behind. People who were hurt are now finally getting the medical attention they need as ambulances rush into the community. And take a look around. Trees are uprooted, the roads are flooded, and the most shocking sight is this right here, seeing the boats washed up on the road. In fact, these boats are still tied to the dock and just tossed on land like they were a toy. So as folks are waking up this morning, that's what we're seeing. And in other parts like where we are right now, yeah, there is a lot of debris like this and and people can get past that, but it's their homes that they're most heartbroken about. People cried a lot today. I cried a lot today. It's a heartbreaking story just watching how this community had their lives just turned upside down in an instant. And I asked families that I spoke to, you know, why they decided to, to stay, and they just say they didn't realize it was going to be so bad. And when they finally did realize, it was just too late to leave.